Will Bevo, um, have you had to send Moz to acting school this week? <laughs> I didn't give him much time. Um, he did his best, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of fun and uh, it's pretty special really when you consider the, the age gap and from an experience point of view. So we thought we'd make the most of it and yeah, it's going to be exciting seeing both of them run out on on Sunday in the, t in the same team. It was unique. Can you tell us the motivation behind it? Oh, look, there's, you know, there's a story there and there's, there's an angle around, you know, it's in your hands and, and all that sort of stuff. But um, ultimately, it's just a bit of fun and uh, a bit of a quirky way of, of delivering the, uh, the news that uh, obviously a, a young debutant in, in Westie is about to uh, wear the colours in his first AFL game. And, and obviously there's, a, there's always a bit of emotion around Moz and uh, yeah, it's quite incredible to think that he's, um, he's almost totally ruptured two ACLs on either side and he's hasn't had any surgery and he's come back and, and played. And so yeah, as I said, um, at the time he's, he's really worked hard in his rehab and he's played extremely well for Footscray at state league level. And, yeah, the good thing is that we, we haven't been able to squeeze him in because we've been playing pretty well. And uh, but here's an opportunity for him to uh, to come in and and uh, and pick up you know where he left off, and uh, and we'll hopefully benefit from his experience. What about, what about Riley? What can we expect from him this week? Yeah, well, Riley's um, he's very determined. Um, you know, for want of better terms, as far as the vernacular goes, they're very hard player, he's tough uh, and um, you know he's, his progress has, um, has gone north this year, he's had to learn how to play, uh, you know, he's playing his senior footy for the first time and um, he's really tapped into uh, what the development coaches and, and with Gia, uh, Coach and Footscray um, have had to say and, and we've been wrapped with his progress so and he'll come in and he'll play a really important role. He'll play a bit forward. If we need him in the midfield, we'll, we'll put him there. Has he got a lot of similarities to his old man, the way that goes about? Uh, well, Westy was always a very um, contested, uh, quite genius player with his hands and his feet were good. Uh, they're very different. Uh, they're, they're very different. Uh, you obviously see the, uh, the, the like, you know, the similarities as far as their looks, which is obvious, stating the obvious, but um, no, Riley's, Riley's a fair bit different to, to Dad, so you'll, and you'll notice that when you see him play. He, he'll do things his own way and uh, he'll add a different flavour to our, our forward line and our forward pressure side of things and yeah, it'll be fascinating to see how it unfolds for him. When he was drafted, did you think he would play this year? Oh, I think when you, um, whenever you um, draft young fellas in the, in the early rounds, you, you're hoping that they can have an impact in their first year. It's actually quite important that they can um, hold their end up at different times. Uh, Dunks did, you know, quite a while ago. Uh, we've obviously had Bailey Smith this year who's had a uh, strong impact on, on what we've been doing. And, um, and so, yeah, we were hoping that Riley had at some point debut for us in, uh, in 2019. And so here he is. And uh, he's worked hard at his... Uh, getting his opportunity. Just on Dale, what does he have to do or how open is he to playing on next year and when we have that conversation with him? Oh, well, Dale and I have ongoing conversations about um, the now and the future and and that transparency when you've got a player of his experience and, and maybe even his age bracket uh, is quite critical for me. So uh, both of us understand what the... Uh, landscape might be up in up ahead so we're definitely I think Dale wants to play till his legs fall off and uh, and we're open to that as long as he continues to um, you know belong at the level and and so yeah I suppose it's an important time for him to re-establish himself and and we'd be delighted to think that he you know, he plays good footy the back end of this year and and he's playing in 2020 we're, we're really open to that. Is it as simple as that though he plays good footy and he Pretty session. much, yeah. yeah. If he's physically okay and he's playing good footy, and um, we believe that he can again next year, then then he'll go on. Um, and I think he'll put up his hand if if he doesn't feel like he's um, he's right. But I, I can't see that happening. I think he's going to be fine.
Is this weekend's game almost one last roll of the dice for you as far as finals go? Well, there's no wriggle room. You know, we knew, we let one slip last week, and uh, I wouldn't imagine we're much of a chance if we uh, if we drop any more. So, uh, as far as that goes, we, we need to win. Yeah, they're in yeah, really an identical state, I would have thought. Their percentage is a little bit better than us, but all of those teams in that sort of bracket, we're at the lower end of it. I can't afford to slip up too many times. So, um, you, know, you don't go into the game thinking that far ahead, but uh, ultimately it's in the back of your mind. Shaki goes out, uh, Sweet's into the squad. Are we going to see English play and, and Sweet as well? Uh, maybe. Sweetie's been pretty good. Um, at state league le level, playing for the Scray, lots of hitouts. His uh, his ruck stuff uh, has really come on. So knowing that they've got some big fellas in their team, we'll we'll make a decision um, at some point. <laughs> and uh, and but he, yeah, he's a chance. He, the great thing is that he's thrown his name up. It's not just because they're tall, um, as you mentioned. With Shaq out, we'd like to have some representation in our forward line. So there's a chance. You got another story ready to go for another debutant? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'm not sure. Oh, with Sweetie. Yeah, okay. Um, no, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. When you reflect on last week, did you sort of see that it was more about like the Saints and their coaching situation than, than you know the, the impact that they had on, on the game and than you know the duration performance? Yeah, not really. I mean, I the important thing is you you have to quickly move on these days to. Uh, to win again the next week and not dwell on how frustrated or disappointed you are. But ultimately, if you, if you go back and watch the first quarter and see how many times we turned the ball over by hand and by foot, we just, I mean, the Saints' pressure was good. I acknowledge that after the game, but we were our own worst enemy and every now and then we have those quarters and they're the ones we've got to um, carve out, extract, um, move away from, and we haven't quite been able to get those out of our system yet and maybe you never do totally but that was just a disaster and it was mainly skill and and so if the endeavour's there the application's there but you just let, let yourself down with skill well um, it's a bit puzzling but uh, it cost us so uh, so I don't I don't think it was so much about the uh, about rats uh, filling in it was more more us and what we what we did. Uh, Tim Watson said this week Marcus Bond and Pally's the best player in the competition right now. How have you assessed his year? Did he? OK. Well, there's lots of good players in the competition. And Marcus has had a strong year. He gets a lot of attention week to week now. And uh, and so, I mean, it's important with your, your most influential players that when they're not having their best days, that the mediocre is good enough, you know, and it's, we can rely on that. And, and Marcus is getting there and... Um, he's had some outstanding performances. So, I mean, that's great to feather in Marx's cap if, uh, if someone of the, uh, the knowledge and the experience and the wisdom of, of Tim Watson saying that. But, um, yeah, we're going to need him to play well against the Dockers. You've got some big, big mids who, uh, who can really push you around and, um, and say his craft will need to be good and he'll understand that this week. You think he's got another level we can go to? Marcus? Uh, well, he's play definitely played the most midfield time since I've coached him this year. We haven't used him as much forward as we have in the past. So whether or not uh, over time the balance of his game alters depending on what his teammates are capable of, um, I can't tell you at this point. But we'd like to think that in the future um, he, he continues to be a really strong offensive player for us and, um, and is a real threat inside 50 and can kick us some more goals, and, and I think that's his, uh, his next evolution. Just one man back in the squad this week, Bailey Williams, out of contract at the end of the season. Showed heaps last year, has been in and out this year. Can you just sort of give us an insight of where he's at and his chances of being here next year? Yeah, well, we're hoping that Bales will be with us. We've been in discussions with his management for a long period of time. We're aware that there's probably some other suitors, you know, and there's some demand for his services. He's a very good player. We've got a lot of depth through... Our, uh, our defensive stocks and at different times he's just found himself out of uh, the equation there and so we've played him in different roles to at least have him in our 22 and as you as you just mentioned he's 
out of the team at the moment. So, but we're doing every, everything we can to keep him. Um, he's a very important, uh, definitely a required player at our football club, um, and we'd hate to lose him. So hopefully we can uh, we can get a deal done before the end of the year. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, I think, I mean, every team goes out uh, doing their utmost to get a really good start. It's, um, so, yeah, you can tinker with different things. I don't think ours was a, necessarily a, an intensity or, a, or a different, we gave away f some clumsy free kicks that were scored from. Um, so we, we'll definitely, we've, we've been addressing it, we've discussed it. It's not... Uh, an inherent problem for us, but um, I think the boys will be ready for uh, for the first minute of this game. How do you see the Freo's form? Obviously, they haven't you know, been travelling too well in the last round. But... Yeah, look, I, I mean, Freo, we haven't beaten them for two years. We uh, we haven't played them in Victoria for a while. That doesn't matter. Uh, we were close last time. They probably had um, a stronger side in as far as their, their first pick last time, but. This is the thing, they've got some players who've come in who are more than capable. They're a good running side, really strong um, speed endurance side. Uh, they can outwork you. They win their games by stealth. Um, there's some interesting strategy there. They've evolved. So we're not totally sure what to expect from a tactical point of view. So we just need to work out uh, exactly what, we're, uh, what our plan A is and carry it out to the letter, give, us our, give ourselves the best chance. So. We'll expect, um, you know, that same um, contested um, hardness aspect of their game. And uh, if we're ready for that, then hopefully everything will flow for us.